We all knew this was coming. No one is surprised by this news. I mean, God forbid a mainstream media company stands behind one of their employees. God forbid a mainstream media company ignores all the fake outrage and judges the man by his character. A 20-plus year career at NBC Sports, a spotless reputation. The time I've spent the last few weeks covering this story with Glenn Kuyper, not one time, not once, have I been able to find one controversial incident. Just think about this. The Oakland A's, they play 162 painfully boring baseball games every year. That's 3,240 games. With the average Major League Baseball game running about three hours, that is almost 10,000 hours of live television. Hundreds of thousands, possibly even millions of words spoken. Up until May 5th, not one time had Glenn Kuyper made a mistake. And with one slip of the tongue, with one forbidden word spoken in error, NBC Sports fires the guy? Well, KC, this was no slip of the tongue. Anyone who says the forbidden word by mistake is obviously comfortable using it. Glenn Kuyper is as comfortable with that word as I am with the Frank in my buns. Cut the shit. Just cut the shit. I am so tired of hearing that garbage from the mainstream media. Skip Bayless is guilty of pushing that false narrative as a way of atoning for his white privilege. Hey, it's me, Skippy. Shay Shay loves my stiffy. Hey, don't even get me started with Deadspin. Earlier this morning, some pretend journalist named Eric Bum defecated a steaming pile of fresh turds claiming this was no mistake by Glenn Kuyper. He is comfortable using that hateful, hateful word. If I'm Glenn Kuyper, I'm looking at this firing as a blessing. This man should be given the respect he deserves. You could not pay me enough to broadcast 162 games of one of the worst franchises in professional sports. Good luck finding a decent broadcaster to fill Glenn Kuyper's role in this dump. I have an idea. NBC Sports. They can atone for their white privilege and give this job to Mark Jones. The A's suck. Mark Jones definitely sucks. It is a match made in Woke United Methodist. Now, just in case someone watching is unfamiliar with what's going on, let me show you why Glenn Kuyper was fired. About three weeks ago, the A's were in Kansas City to compete against another team in Major League Baseball that no one cares about. Obviously, this game was not broadcast on national television. It was only available regionally in Kansas City and Oakland, meaning about three dozen people were watching this garbage. During the pregame show, Glenn Kuyper was talking about their visit to the Negro League Museum in Kansas City. He was promoting the museum. He was praising the city of Kansas City. The dude was trying to help out. He was trying to bring awareness to the museum. They're trying to get funding for a new building. But in his quest to help out, Glenn Kuyper violated the first woke commandment. As you guys know, violating the first commandment is a crime punishable by life without parole and the burial of your media career. There is no grace. There is no forgiveness. Thou shalt not commit mythical racism. Key word, mythical. Because the racism, it doesn't have to be real. The only thing that matters is the media's ability to portray it as real. Here's the clip. Watch for yourself. We had a phenomenal day today. League Museum and Arthur Bryant's barbecue. During the broadcast, Glenn Kuyper ended up apologizing for his mistake. Now, of course, the apology was not enough for the deacons at Woke United Methodist. He waited until the sixth inning to issue this insincere apology. <laughs> yeah. I would imagine it took that long because Glenn Kuyper didn't realize he had slipped up. Matter of fact, I would imagine everyone else at NBC Sports didn't realize it either. If they had, you can bet your ass that it would have been addressed immediately. I doubt NBC realized it happened until they saw the backlash on Twitter. Over the last three weeks, NBC Sports conducted what they called a thorough investigation into the situation with Glenn Kuyper. What needed to be investigated here? I mean, the dude was caught on tape. The clip lasted about 30 seconds. It took three weeks to investigate a 30-second clip? When I initially covered this story, it took me about five minutes. I think NBC spent the last three weeks looking into the past of Glenn Kuyper, looking into his background, looking into his personal history, trying to find a single shred of evidence that Glenn Kuyper is the evil white man. 
According to an anonymous source involved with the investigation, NBC decided to fire Glenn Kuyper because of information uncovered during the internal review. What information was uncovered? I wish I could tell you, but no one knows. Because NBC decided not to elaborate. You know what that tells me? They didn't find a damn thing. You know, you just know. If NBC had found evidence of Glenn Kuyper wearing a white hoodie, they would have released it to the public. It would further justify their reason for firing him. It would provide proof to the wanker spankers who are accusing him of mythical racism. NBC Sports, they would go from the back rows at Woke United Methodist to VIP seating in the front row, where we would be cleansed of the holy water that escapes the mouth of Father Jalen Rose. There is one reason, and one reason only, that NBC Sports fired Glenn Kuyper. And just to be clear here, this decision, it was not made by the Oakland A's. A's manager Mark Kotze, he actually came out publicly and defended Glenn Kuyper. He also confirmed that the organization, the franchise, they had no say in this matter. This decision was made by NBC Sports. And there's only one reason they made this decision. Fear. They're scared. KC, what are they afraid of? They're afraid of the shit fucks. They're afraid of the deacons at Woke United Methodist. They're afraid of putting Glenn Kuyper back on the air and some emotional male that probably used to be female being triggered by the sound of his voice. As soon as that happened, it would be headline news throughout the mainstream media. Joy Reid would lead off her show talking about the white privilege given to Glenn Kuyper and the victims of his mythical racism. The president of this museum in Kansas City he was willing to forgive Glenn Kuyper. He came out publicly and I wouldn't say he defended Glenn Kuyper or what he said, but he definitely forgave him. Not the mainstream media though. No, 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 no. Forgiveness for violating the woke commandments? I was talking to my dad yesterday afternoon about the shift that is happening or it's coming in the mainstream media. This situation with Glenn Kuyper or what happened with Tucker Carlson at Fox News, these are the reasons that I believe the media is about to drastically change. These large media conglomerates, they no longer stand by their employees. Howard Stern offended people for decades. Hell, Howard Stern made a career out of being offensive. The FCC, the government, they were constantly finding radio stations millions of dollars. They stood by Howard Stern. Jerry Springer was a literal shit show, never got fired. Glenn Beck could not keep sponsors at Fox News. They begged him to stay. That doesn't happen anymore. All it takes is one mistake and you're gone. In the eyes of management, you're not worth the trouble. They don't want to deal with the fake outrage on Twitter. They don't want to fight the problem. They just want the problem to go away. Because of that fear, because of their unwillingness to fight, it's becoming too risky for mainstream media corporations to rely on opinion-based content. Take a look at the media. Take a look at the mainstream media, from Fox News to CNN, ESPN to MSNBC. For the most part, it's all the same. Heavily censored, regurgitated garbage. That's why you see the Glenn Becks, the Megyn Kellys. That's why you see these independent broadcasters, podcasters becoming so successful. They are allowed to speak their minds without the constraints of corporate media. In the past, Tucker Carlson gets fired by Fox News, you never see him again. Today, Tucker Carlson gets fired by Fox News, he becomes even bigger. Opinion-based content is more entertaining on platforms like YouTube or Rumble, Spotify. The internet is destroying legacy media. Glenn Beck saw this coming over 10 years ago. That's why he started The Blaze. Gotta give Glenn Beck credit. Dude is a visionary. He saw this shift coming before anyone else did. Now, it's not gonna happen tomorrow. Not gonna happen next year, but five, maybe 10 years, the mainstream media will be unrecognizable compared to what we have today. In order for them to maintain their power and influence, they're going to have to differentiate themselves from independent podcasters. They can't fight this battle with opinion-based content because their opinion-based content sucks. It's watered down. I think what they're going to have to do, they're going to have to revert back to hard news, breaking news, because major media companies, they are the only ones with the resources to provide coverage that spans the entire world. The Blaze can't do that. The Daily Wire can't do that. Dan Bongino can't do that. I know it's hard to believe for younger people, but that's what the mainstream media used to do. Breaking news. 
I think they'll go back to doing that and people will rely on podcasters for opinions on the story. Otherwise, I don't see how some of these mainstream media outlets survive. There are too many constraints. There's too much bureaucracy. They're handcuffed. They can't give you the truth. Tucker Carlson was essentially fired because he refused to comply. But give me your thoughts. NBC Sports fires Glenn Kuyper for making one mistake on live television. One mistake in a 20-year career. Also, let me know what you think about my mainstream media theory. Do you see the same shift coming? I could be wrong here. I've been a dumbass before, but you let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys later.